we have defined power and energy in electrical elements and also looked at power and energy in uh, elements like resistor, capacitor and inductor and found that these components are all passive. Now, we will look at uh, power and energy in independent sources such as the voltage source and current source and see that they can be active. So, this is a voltage source, it maintains a given voltage V equals V naught regardless of the current flowing through it and as always I use passive sign convention for the voltage and current definitions. Okay. Now, of course, just like for any other element the power is the product of V and I, it is important to remember that this is the power delivered to the voltage source. or in other words absorbed by the voltage source. Okay. This is the power absorbed by the voltage source and the energy absorbed will be just the integral of power, nothing special about it. If you want to find the energy absorbed over a given interval, you integrate the power over that interval. Okay. Now, let me draw the I V characteristics of a voltage source. I will assume that this V naught is positive. We know from earlier discussions that the characteristic is a vertical line at V equals V naught. So, regardless of the current, the voltage is V naught. Now, if you look at the first quadrant, V is positive and I is positive and the voltage source actually absorbs power because uh, the product V I is greater than 0. And if you look at the fourth quadrant, V is of course, greater than 0, but I is smaller than 0. That is I defined in this direction is negative. That means, that current will be flowing out of the positive terminal if it is operating in the fourth quadrant okay and in this condition it delivers power okay so a voltage source can either absorb power or deliver power because there is the possibility of the voltage source delivering power it is an active element okay meaning it is not passive. Okay. So, a voltage source can be arranged to absorb power, but it also can be arranged to deliver power. Okay. So, it is not passive when it is operating in the fourth quadrant. This will be clear by looking at a few examples. Okay. Now, let me consider a voltage source of value 5 volts connected to a resistor of value 1 kilo ohm. Okay. Now, we will do this carefully, we do not always have to do it this formally, but you have to be very mindful of the directions of current and voltages that you consider. Okay. So, now what I will do is I will define the voltage across the voltage source to be V 1 and I will use the correct passive sign convention for V 1 and define I 1 this way. So, V 1 is the voltage across the voltage source, I 1 is the current through the voltage source and it is clear that I have chosen passive sign convention for this. And I will do the same for the resistor. Let us say I call this voltage V r and given this polarity of V r, I have to choose the direction of uh, I r to be that way. So, that uh, this follows passive sign convention for the resistor. Okay. So, V 1 and I 1 
are defined with passive sign convention applied to the voltage source and similarly, V R and I R are defined with the same thing applied to the resistor. So, like I said we would not always do it this formally, because all of you will recognize that V R equals V 1 and I R will be equal to minus I 1 and you will also see that the voltage across the resistor is this 5 volts and the current by Ohm's law would be I R is 5 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm is 5 milli amperes. Okay. So, if this were just a circuit analysis problem you would not define so many variables, but I am trying to make a point here about power dissipated and generated. So, we will proceed formally in the beginning. Okay. So, now what is the power absorbed by the resistor? It is V R times I R, which is 5 milliamps times 5 volts, which is 25 milli watts. Okay. So, let me also write it here uh, V R, which is V 1 is 5 volts and I R is 5 milliamps and that is also equal to minus I 1. And the power absorbed by the voltage source equals V 1 I 1 is minus 25 milli watts. Okay. So, this means that the power absorbed by the voltage source is negative. In other words, it is delivering power. Okay. Of course, I could have said this just by looking at having one source and one load and saying that the voltage source delivers the power, but when it comes to multiple elements and given the fact that a voltage source can absorb or deliver power. Uh, first proceed with calculations very carefully defining the voltages and currents correctly. After that you will be able to do this lot more easily. Okay. So, in other words the voltage source delivers 25 milliwatts which goes into the resistor. Okay. Now, in general if you have a single voltage source that is applied to a circuit with uh, resistors which are passive, then that voltage source will be delivering power. Okay. If I have a single voltage source and this consists only of resistors let us say, then this is the only source of power in the circuit and it will be delivering power. On the other hand, if you have multiple independent sources, just to be consistent with this picture, I will show in the middle a circuit consisting of only resistors and I will show another source on another side. So, let us say this is V 1 and this is V 2 and we could have even more let us say I have V 3 and so on. Okay. We could also have current sources, but for now I will consider voltage sources. Okay. Now, we have multiple sources. These uh, sources together will be delivering power to the circuit but each one of them could be absorbing or uh, delivering power. Okay. So, it is possible that V 1 is delivering power and both V 2 and V 3 are absorbing power. Okay. So, th some sources could be absorbing power. Okay. So, this is possible. So, we will take an example of this very simple extension of the earlier example. So, let me consider an 8 volt source and a 3 volt source with polarity like this. I 
and again a 1 kilo ohm resistor connected to it. Now, I will again I will proceed formally, I will call this V 1 and for passive sign convention I have to take I 1 going into this terminal. By the way, V 1 is the voltage across this voltage source. Okay. This is I 1. Now, I will consider the 3 volt source and I can define the first variable any way I want. So, deliberately I will define it like this V 2. Okay. Note that V 2 is opposite in polarity to the voltage source voltage itself, but that does not matter. Once I choose V 2, I have to consider I 2 like this for passive sign convention and similarly I will consider V R and I R. Okay. So, V 1 I 1, V 2 I 2, V R I R, each of them has been chosen for the two voltage sources and the resistor and consistent with the passive sign convention. Okay. Now, the analysis of this circuit is trivial and many of you can do it in your head in a matter of seconds the voltage across this combination the series combination of voltage sources is 5 volts and we have therefore, 5 milliamp flowing through the resistor. Okay. So, now we will compute each of these uh, currents okay, and voltages. So, first of all V 1 equals 8 volts because it is the same as the voltage of the voltage source and I 1 is defined this way, but in the circuit the 5 milliamp current is flowing in the clockwise direction like that. Okay. So, I 1 is minus 5 milliamperes. and their product V 1 I 1 the power absorbed by the 8 volt voltage source is minus 40 milliwatts and similarly for the second voltage source V 2 defined this way is minus 3 volts okay, because I have taken V 2 to be an opposite in polarity to this one, but no matter V 2 happens to be minus 3 volts. Then I 2 which is the current flowing downwards this way is also minus 5 milliamperes. So, P 2 is minus 3 times minus 5 which is plus 15 milliwatts this is again the power absorbed in the 3 volt source. And finally, the resistor voltage V r is 5 volts and the current I r is 5 milliamperes. So, the power P r is plus 25 milliwatts. Okay. So, it means that this voltage source and the resistor of course, are absorbing power. The resistor of course, always absorbs power, but the voltage source could either absorb or deliver power. In this particular case, the 3 volt source is absorbing power, whereas the 8 volt source is delivering power. Okay. So, this is an example to show that an independent voltage source could be absorbing power as well. Okay. So, that depends on the operating point of the circuit. Okay. And another thing I want to mention which we will go into detail perhaps later. If you look at the sum of power absorbed in every element in the circuit P 1 plus P 2 plus P r, this is equal to 0. Okay. Now, this is not a coincidence, this is a property of uh, circuits and it can be proven from Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, if you take every element of a circuit and calculate the power absorbed by them, that is the products of uh, V and I chosen according to the passive sign convention, then the sum of all those powers will be 0. Okay. There will be some sources delivering power, there will be some other elements absorbing power, but the net will be 0. Okay. So, the summary is that a voltage source can either absorb or deliver power and if it is operating in the fourth quadrant or the second quadrant, it will be delivering power. If it is operating in the first or third quadrant, it will be absorbing power. A resistor whose characteristics are always only in the first and third quadrants 
will be always be absorbing power. Of course, I am considering positive resistors. Okay. Now, when you have a number of sources, there will be at least one source delivering power and others could be either absorbing or delivering power. And if you have a circuit with a single source, that source will be delivering power. Okay. 